All right, I think it's time that we uh, take a peek under this unit's bonnet. So uh, what are we expecting to see inside? Uh, well, uh, because of its uh, weight, definitely some sort of a, a large transformer, probably a toroidal transformer, um, a very large heatsink as well, and then some of the control circuitry, which might be uh, right at the front of this unit. Let's go. Now it's got uh, four screws on each side, uh, to the front, to the back, and uh, same for the other side. And then I suspect this handle uh, probably has some screws going down uh, to the bottom to make it uh, nice and sturdy. Let's start disassembling. And here we go. Oh okay, so I think let's start from this side and have a closer look at what's going on. So at first glance, the construction actually looks quite solid. No uh, complaints about the uh, the construction. This uh, metal bar on the inside, this is where the uh, top handle screws into. It also uh, gives an ex extra rigidity to the whole uh, assembly. And uh, at the front here, a single PCB for the controls as well as the display. Downstairs here, we've got the, where the uh, binding posts are. Uh, we've got separate windings for each channel. Um, these are some uh, switching relays. We'll have a look at those just now. I suspect these relays at the back switch between the windings as you uh, tune the voltage up and down. We've got some fairly hefty current shunts. We'll have a look at the capacitors more closely. We'll have a look at the components that are mounted on the heatsink and of course the noisy fan at the back. And then on the other side here, yeah, you can see these the other winding coming in. Uh, also some separate windings just to be able to create some uh, power for the control circuitry. That's likely to power the uh, microprocessor and the front panel, backlight and all the other associated uh, circuitry. Uh, interesting uh, flat flex cable here, it's actually quite a fine pitch. Let's hope we don't have to undo that during the disassembly process. <laughs> here you can see the main filter capacitor, those are Jamican capacitors. They're not the top tier quality caps, but also definitely not at the bottom of the range. Uh, these are fairly big uh, capacitors and they're rated for 105 degrees C with each channel having a 6800 microfarad capacitor rated at 63 volts. Tucked away right at the back you've got the bridge rectifier. Over here we've got either a transistor or a MOSFET. We'll have a look at the component values just now. And uh, open spot for probably for the uh, 3 and 4 channel versions. And tucked away right at the back there you can see the, a temperature sensor and that's just bonded right onto the heatsink there. And on the control side, you can see a whole flurry of PC board mount fuses. There's another bridge rectifier right at the back here. And uh, then we've got a whole bunch of uh, uh, regulators over here. Most of these regulators seem to be 15 volts uh, on both uh, negative and positive rails, probably for controlling the uh, op amps or supplying power to the op amps and I'm sure that we'll also see a 5 volt regulator somewhere here for the uh, microprocessor. As you can see the capacitors for these regulators are also Jamicon, also rated for 105 degrees C. And then finally on the output stage of the regulators you can see caps on caps. They're also not uh, the best quality capacitors but also again not on the low end of the scale. It's sort of a, a middle tier capacitor when it comes to quality. And that is a CEP85N75, which is an in-channel MOSFET. It's got an RDS of 12 milliohms when fully on. It can handle 86 amps, huh, probably just for short periods. And it's rated at a maximum of 200 watts for dissipation. Now I've unplugged the fan and I've turned on the power supply. I just want you to listen to the uh, winding relay switch in and out. So as I turn up the voltage, that's at 7 volts, that's at 15 volts, and that's at about 22 volts. These relays switch in and out in order to select the best winding 
from the toroidal transformer so that the power dissipation through that internal MOSFET is as low as possible. Now, uh, while I've got the fan unplugged, I'm just feeling the temperature of these heat sinks, and I must admit, they are actually quite warm. The little regulators down to the side don't really get warm at all, but these two definitely do. It's probably why they've got heat sinks on. But I think without that fan, these are going to get very, very warm. Let's have a quick uh, squeeze at the uh, temperature there. Yep, that's definitely increasing very quickly. Hmm, okay. So it definitely needs uh, at least some form of airflow over those heat sinks. Without it, it seems that the temperature on these uh, little regulators are definitely going to climb way too high. Looking at the rest of the construction, this toroidal transformer really is beautifully beefy. It's got the uh, windings on the one side for the one channel and then also on the other side for the other channel. And then down here, we've got a very nice clunking power switch. Yeah, that's nicely done. No issues with that. The uh, flex, flat flex cable, nicely channeled with a little clip on the top of this uh, clunking switch here. And right at the back here, you've got the ground cable coming from the IEC socket and neatly tied into the casing at the back there. The front panel, of course, offers this grounding pin and a grounding strap if you want to uh, ground your uh, project, or you can just remove that grounding strap if you want the uh, outputs of the power supply completely isolated for your project. Just behind the front panel, you can see that ground pin is tied to the casing again, which in turn, of course, is tied to the ground point at the back of the case. As you can see, there's quite a lot of unpopulated componentry on the main PC board down at the bottom. That's, of course, to accommodate the uh, three-channel and the four-channel versions. They won't spin up different uh, PC boards just for the different models. So they uh, just leave these uh, components unpopulated for the three- and four-channel versions. Right on the output of uh, each channel, you can see there's a small uh, 220 microfarad capacitor, each rated at 50 volts just to take that edge off. And I think now it's time to have a look at the front control panel. Really? No, there's another flat flex all the way down there connecting the display to the uh, front control panel. Alright, so here's the main control board of the uh, power supply. Uh, it controls both the analog and digital sections. Uh, we'll have a closer look at uh, each section of the board. Uh, in the center here you've got mostly op amps. All of these uh, SO8 uh, devices are all uh, dual op amps. Uh, the potentiometers for current and voltage over here. Single turn pots, 6.5 kilo ohms each. These are the buttons, look to be of a fairly high quality actually. And uh, right across on the other end here, you've got two microcontrollers. And there you can see the PIC 16F1783 microcontroller. This is actually quite an interesting microcontroller. It runs at 32 megahertz. It has a 12-bit analog to digital converter and a 16-bit digital to analog converter. The 12-bit 80 converter on this PIC can complete a single conversion in less than uh, one microsecond. So it's actually quite fast. The chip also has an onboard voltage reference. And what's interesting is the power supply has a dedicated microcontroller for each channel. And the capacitors on this board are also all Jamicon and they're all rated at 105 degrees C. Oh, and one thing I did forget to mention are the sense wires for each channel. So uh, here you can see the sense wire for channel one. Here's the uh, sense wire for channel two. And these go directly to the binding posts on the uh, front PCB 
to uh, read off the voltages on those posts. And here you can see where those uh, sense lines plugged in. You can see these are the, the, the barrels for the uh, binding posts right to the front for channel 1. You can see here's the power feed coming in. The little bypass capacitor sits right in between those two connectors. And here's the uh, sense lines. And that's actually a very good thing because you want these sense lines to be as close as possible to the binding posts to be able to read off those voltages. And just measuring the current shunts there, it looks to be about 50 milliohms. And at 50 milliohm, that'll dissipate around 500 milliwatts or about half a watt at maximum current output of uh, 3.2 amps. And over here, you can see the outputs going directly to the front uh, binding posts. These are the relays that will be switching in and out in order to connect these outputs either in series or parallel to either boost the current or boost the uh, total output voltage. And right at the output of each uh, connector, you have a protection diode. Looking at the rest of the construction in general, it's not too bad. This uh, toroidal is really well mounted. Uh, the number of this uh, toroidal transformer is 3003-PE003001. And if you have a look at the heatsink here, they've added the, a sort of a, a PCB just to give add some additional rigidity to this uh, structure here. So that, uh, that seems to be quite uh, stable and sturdy. The uh, wire looms have all been uh, tied up. There's nothing uh, running past any uh, component where it can chafe or uh, otherwise damage. Each of the high voltage wires have an additional protective sleeving on it. So yeah, I'm actually quite happy with that. There's, uh, there's really no issues with the, uh, the build quality and the construction of this power supply. And you've even got some protection shielding over the high voltage areas at the back of the uh, voltage selector switches. Now in order to test the isolation of this uh, toroidal mounting, I'm just going to measure between the chassis and the center bolt. So that should give me a voltage reading. There we go. So about 343 millivolts AC. So uh, that means uh, for every single turn or one turn around this toroidal core, I will get 343 millivolts. Uh, it also tells us that uh, this center bolt is correctly isolated so that there's no design issue in terms of uh, eddy currents around this toroidal. So let's just quickly look at the fan situation. I've bent these components out of the way and I've unplugged the fan. This is where the uh, fan plugs in into this connector. Now over there you can see a little chip and that uh, device is a DC-DC converter and it can either step up or step down. So what I'm suspecting is that this is driving the fan, but what I'm not sure of is whether or not there's any control or speed control of this fan. Now we'll have a look at a later stage when I start loading this power supply to see whether or not the fan speed does increase. But uh, from what I've seen, uh, it basically turns at the same speed all the time. So I'm not very convinced that there's any sort of uh, intelligent speed control on this fan. So I've got this power supply loaded at 3.2 amps on each channel. You can actually hear the fan is really spinning quite loudly. Uh, I'm just going to reach over and quickly test the fan output voltage. And there you can see it's uh, reading 23 point, uh, what's that, 23.37 volts. It's a 24 volt fan, so it's uh, running at almost its uh, maximum voltage. Uh, let's just uh, disable the output of the power supply and see how that uh, voltage gets affected. Yeah. And almost immediately you can see the voltage starts to uh, decrease as the temperature of the heat sinks recover. So let's just let it run for a while. This uh, little meter over here is just measuring the heat sink temperature 
of the uh, electronics regulators. It's not meeting. Uh, it's not measuring the uh, heatsink of the uh, main power supply. All right, so I let it cool down completely. You can see heat sinks well, back to uh, 28 degrees uh, Celsius and the fan output voltage has now gone down to about 18 volts DC so uh, this, this seems to be the, uh, the lowest voltage uh, that the uh, regulator outputs towards the fan it tells me that maybe the thresholds might not be set up or configured completely correctly um, the fan is still spinning quite quickly and it should be able to actually spin quite a bit lower than it is now so yeah, maybe in a future video we can have a look at that and see if we can maybe adjust the output voltage of the fan so that it turns a lot slower and the power supply is not as noisy as it is now. Alright guys, I think that's it for this video. Please let me know if you liked it by giving me a big thumbs up down below. That just gives me some feedback and it lets me know that I should continue making these types of videos. Thanks for watching.